Hi guys, uh, I'm here in Central Park in New York City where it is really, really hot outside, hot and humid. Um, and since this is going to be one of the first chem walks, um, and since it is pretty damn hot, uh, I felt like it was kind of the, I'll say the weather was begging me um, to talk about heat and to talk about the first law of thermodynamics. So let's do it. Um, all right, where to start? First law of thermodynamics is usually written like so, where it's delta U equals Q minus W. Um, sometimes you'll see it written as uh, delta U equals Q plus W. Sometimes a delta U will be a delta E. Um, but for, for our purposes, um, I think we'll, we'll stick with the, the delta U equals Q minus W version. Um, so let's, let's define the variables here. So delta U is the change in internal energy. Q is heat and W is work. Okay. That's all good. But now I, I want to be, I want to be more specific about what exactly this equation entails. So this equation delta U equal to Q minus W describes the change in internal energy of a system or some process. Okay. It basically says that the change in internal energy of that system is equal to the heat transfer over the process um, minus the work done by the system. Okay, so now I've got some more terms to define for you here. Um, I talked about a process and I talked about a system. Um, so a system in thermodynamics is usually just, you can think of it as some combination of like molecules. Um, it depends on on what you're describing here um but you know your system can be like a tub of water for example that maybe you're heating up um it can be you know a set of chemicals maybe it's like uh, you know some nitrogen and hydrogen gas because you're um a fertilizer company and you're making ammonia through the Haber process so a system is basically just whatever combination of atoms and molecules that you that you define you're interested to see the change in internal energy of okay and so now what's a process well a process is some 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 sort of event or some sort of change that occurs um to to a system and that usually occurs uh because of a change in the surroundings of a system or because of a difference in the surroundings of uh, in the surroundings versus uh, the system itself all right so so that's for defining i guess a system and a process um now let's talk about internal energy um and for this one let me let me, let me take a sink uh so internal energy um you can think of it as just a combination of all energy of a system so that's kinetic and potential energy and that's pretty much all there is now what about heat well heat is interesting because let's let's compare it to internal energy so you can get rid of that delta symbol in front of the u in internal energy and you end up with you know just u and there's there is this sort of uh, overarching concept of an absolute internal ener internal energy um, like intuitively, but we know that in, in chemistry and a lot of physics, what really only makes sense is to observe the change in internal energy, um, of a system, uh, that undergoes some process going from one state to the next, right? Whereas Q here, Q, you don't really write the change in heat. There's no, there's no concept of an absolute amount of heat that, you know, uh, a molecule or like a tub of water stores. So heat in and of itself is associated with a process. So this Q here is actually a heat transfer from usually from system to surroundings or vice versa. And it's the same, 
it's a similar idea with work where there's no such thing as like a change in work. Work itself describes sort of um, the energy that um, is used or, or, uh, or added during some sort of, you can think of it as a mechanical process, right? So you'll often learn about work uh, in physics class where you'll say work is equal to force times a distance, right? Um, uh, for if, if the force and the, and the direction of movement are parallel. So for example, um, if we have some dude who's pushing a box in, let's say, the X direction, uh, and he pushes it two meters um, at, with a force of uh, 10 newtons, right? Um, and then the question is, how much work did he do to get this box from point A to point B, where point B is two meters separated from point A? Um, how much work did he do? Well, he did two times 10 uh, newton meters or joules of work. And, you know, once that box is at point A, we don't, we don't now say that, that the box gained, you know, gained 20 joules of work, right? It's just that 20 joules of work was done on the box to move it from point A to point B. It's still the same box at the end, at the end of it all. It's just in a different location. And it's sort of the same idea here when we're describing the first law of thermodynamics, delta u equals q minus w. Um, the work, you says with the heat, is only associated with the process. There's no such concept of absolute work that, um, that you know, a system holds. So that's great. Um, now let me talk about the nuance there is with work. So I described at the beginning that sometimes we write it as um, delta U equals Q plus W instead of Q minus W. And this is where things get a little bit weird. Um, and I forget, I actually forget which one uh, chemists usually default to. Um, but both of them are correct. It just depends how you define work. So in the first case, delta U equals Q minus W. The W is the work done by the system. In other words, let's say you have a balloon of gas, right? Um, and you know, for example, you you bring it you bring it up into a plane, right? Um, and the air pressure around you, the atmospheric pressure is lower, and so the balloon expands, right? Um, a lot of us are familiar with that, and the expansion of that balloon is a process that involves work. So the gas molecule inside the balloon are doing work on the outsides of the balloon to expand it, increase its volume. And so in that case, you know, the work done by the system is positive. If, if it were an opposite scenario, if you blew up a balloon uh, uh, in a plane and then brought it back down to Earth, it would shrink. And the result is the atmospheric pressure, the surroundings, is doing work on the system. So the work done by the system is essentially negative in that sense. So in this formulation, delta U equals Q minus W, that situation would be a negative work situation. The complete opposite is true if your definition of the first law of thermodynamics is delta U equals Q plus W. Okay. So again, let's go back to that example of someone taking a blowing up a balloon uh, on Earth and then going up, uh, not into space, but in the atmosphere uh, in a plane where the atmospheric pressure is lower. And so now the, the balloon, the air in the balloon, does work on the balloon to expand it, right? And because it does work in this formulation, in the second formulation of the first law of thermodynamics, we say that the, the balloon, the system, is kind of losing work because it's done work. So this would be negative work in this case, when the system does work in this definition, the work is negative. Um, when the surroundings do work on the system, then the work is positive. So for the case where you blow up a balloon in a plane and bring it back down to uh, atmospheric pressure, um, in that case, the work done on the system is now positive work. Okay, so overall, um, in the Q minus W formulation, we say work done by the system is positive and work done on the system is negative. Whereas in the plus W formulation, we say work done on the system uh, is positive and work done by the system 
is negative. So it's just a matter of definition. And you do have to be careful a lot of the time. Um, but as long as you know which one you're working with, you understand which one is which, you're always going to be fine. So I think that might be all I have to say about the first law of thermodynamics, um, at least in terms of like a, uh, an overall intuitive description. Um, I guess this became more of like a, a chem sit than a chem walk um, because it is, it is harder than you think to get deep dive into different concepts um, while you're while you're walking but yeah i i hope that was helpful um and i will see you guys in the next chem walk